Make it like this. It's okay. Um, let's see who's gonna be coming online. Let's see those that are live. We all know that whenever I shoot video <clears throat> at the end of shooting, I usually pop up on the camera to say hello to all my subscribers and let them know that I've made new set of videos that will be coming up in the other week. So let's see who is online before I dive in. Let's wait a bit. I just finished shooting. It's been a busy day. I've been shooting, answering a lot of questions, yet I have been answering a lot of questions on my videos. Like I was able to answer like six questions in six different videos. So I was able to make six videos that are going to be popping up today. No, not today, sorry. <laughs> they are going to be popping up soon, hopefully this week and next week. Okay, they are not going to be popping up today. I was just, just joking anyway. Hello everyone. Um, I see we have 29 people now. That's good. Welcome. And um, for those that are meeting me for the first time, my name is Messi Mary. I am a registered nurse and a midwife in Nigeria. And I am also a registered nurse in the United Kingdom. I am currently practicing as an anesthetic and recovery practitioner in the United Kingdom. And I talk about reproductive health. And I also talk about your health in general, okay? And I have a master's degree in public health. So I think that's a little thing you should know about me. I just like talking about health. I just like educating a lot of people because I knew where I grew up from, where I don't really have access to health education. And I have made a mistake in regards to my head. So that's why I'm always coming online, educating people. And I've seen I've been able to make a lot of impact because of the numbers of subscribers that keep joining our community daily. All right. Thank you all of you for coming online. I can see Patricia, Patricia. Hello, Patricia, Patricia. I can see James Set, Momo. Hello, James Set. Hello, Miss Gifty. Hello, Global Goodness Investment. Hello, good afternoon. How are you doing? And trust you, you're doing great. Hello, Twanda. Kids, Gore. Hi, and how are you doing? Kagisho Kangayago, hello. Jumea Francis, hello. Ambasira Cheung, hi, Nos, hello. Wanzo Chiamaka, hi, Nos Mary, how are you doing? So, most of the times, after making videos for the week, I try to pop up online to take questions, especially for those that have been sending me DMs and are sending me WhatsApp messages. I can't reply all the messages at once. So when I come live, it's an opportunity for me to take as much questions as I can that I can provide answers for. That's what that's why I usually come live after shooting videos. So today I was able to shoot my normal videos. At uh, the end of today, I'm going to be sending it to the video editor. So whenever the video editor finishes editing, I'm going to be uploading it on the channel. So that's what I do. So I'm done shooting for the day and I decided to come online to say hi. For those that know me, this is my regular routine. You always see me on a live video after shooting. Okay. Hello, good day. Go, good day. God day is CN. Hello, how are you doing? Taye Alex, hello, how are you doing? So if you have any question, feel free to drop on the comment section now. So don't wait for other people to start dropping. At least when you drop on time, you get answers to your questions first. Okay. So if you have any questions, ask on the comment section. If I can't provide answer to that particular question, trust me for those that have been following. I usually go back, study about it, ask questions for those that are more um, knowledgeable in that area before I come out to make videos on it. So that's what I normally do. So feel free to ask your questions on the comment section and I hope I am able to provide all the useful answers you need. Hello, Omali Chawa. How are you? And trust you are doing great. What's the meaning of Omali Chawa? I think it's something beautiful, something adored or something from the Igbo perspective. Hello, Malcha. How are you doing? I trust you are doing wonderful things on the message. So let's start. We have Patricia. Patricia, I said, please, I'm 26 weeks pregnant with coliform. My midwife gave me Amoxil for it. Okay. Since you are six weeks pregnant with coliform, so um, the Amoxil might be the best treatment for it. So what I would advise you to do is to stick with the medication, finish up with the prescription and go back to the midwife again so they can check and find out if there is still coliform or everything has been sorted out. So that is what I have to say in regards to Patricia. Patricia, but trust me, you can still carry your baby to the term, stay positive, and do your normal thing, all right? No need to be worried. Just make sure you take your medications and speak to your midwife 
or your doctor. Oh my God. James said, Momo said, I am finally pregnant. This is me telling you congratulations. Like, it's actually a good news to be pregnant, especially those that are trying to conceive. You get, it's not good news for those that are not expecting a baby, but it's good news when you are trying to conceive. So James said, Momo, I am telling you congratulations and I wish you a safe and wonderful delivery. Okay, Momo, I wish you a safe and wonderful delivery. I'm super excited. For those that have been following on the YouTube channel, I dropped a message that I want to create a WhatsApp platform where we can have women that are trying to conceive, where we can help them calculate their cycles. When we help them calculate their cycle, we give them an idea on when to have sex with their partner. We tell them what test to run in order to help them get pregnant. So I'm planning on that, but I just need to have more time, structure out how it's going to be and how I'm going to be providing useful support to women out there. So I'm working on it, but I have not been able to like draft out the whole conclusion. I might need the help of a gynecologist. You get around. I might need the help of a fertility doctor. So I need to get others involved so you can get um, premier help try to get support from other people so we can be able to help women trying to conceive, get pregnant, we calculate their cycle for them, tell them when to have sex, we let them know the tests that can't be done also, semen analysis and things like that, when and when to take a particular drug. So I'm working towards that. When I finally achieve the, when the goals, like the strategy has been achieved, I'm going to post it on the social media handle so that those that are trying to conceive Yeah. Just let me know if you can still hear me. Patricia, Patricia, thank you, my beautiful nurse. Thank you very much, Patricia. I'm happy for you and congratulations in advance because you have less than 20 weeks to go and you also hear the cry of your baby. That's so much for it. Ufere Favor, thank you so much for all your teaching. Thank you very much. James said, Momo, thank you, Ma. Thank you very much for actually staying on our YouTube channel and relying on us for more information. For those that are noticing, we are diversing to other aspects of health. It's no longer reproductive health. We want to deal with all aspects of your health. Be it reproductive, diabetes, hypertension, depends on the questions I get from you. So that's what's going to determine the topics I'm going to be making videos on. All right. So like today, um, I've been able to make videos on how to stay, how to live with chronic kidney disease. We all know that a lot of people have been battling with chronic kidney disease like a lot. So I've been able to make a video on how to live with chronic kidney disease. And I've been able to make a video on diabetes mellitus, types of diabetes, not the usual type 1 or type 2, you know. There's another type of diabetes that is not as a result of, um, it's not as a result of insulin or glucose. I've made a video on that. I've also made a video, something very interesting. I made a video on the first pig transplant if you've heard recently, um, there was a transplant done in which a pig kidney was given to a man, a 62-year-old man who has end-stage renal, end-stage kidney disease. So the man now has a kidney from a pig. So I made a video on that, and I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about the man on that particular video. The video is going to pop up once it's been it. Once the video editor is done editing it, then. Um, I made a video on, uh, what did I make a video on? Yeah. I made a video on, for those that are trying to conceive, they are using lubricants. I made a video on fertility-friendly lubricants. Yeah. And I also made a video on family planning, spermicide. For those, in my last live video, somebody asked about spermicide. So I've been able to make a video on spermicide and how it helps to prevent pregnancy. So that video is going to be popping up too. So these are what I made a video on today. I'm going to be showing on our YouTube channel. So feel free to ask questions while I wait. So um, somebody said, Jumea Francis said, I am a workman that work on the sun every day. When you say you work on, okay, under the sun, like it's okay, every day. And I take Coca-Cola all the time as my food. I hope it will not have side effects on my health. I'm going to be sincere with you. Generally, caffeinated drinks like Coca-Cola, energy-giving drinks, I'm also bad with it too. It's not good for your health. Generally, it's not good for your health. Okay? Why you may not be seeing that impact now? 
is because maybe you are doing a lot of exercise. It's like it's washing away the sugar. Let's just assume, but I'm not telling you it is. It's taking away the sugar, the glucose, heat is washing it away out of the body, something like that. But it is not good for your health generally. What I would advise, Coca-Cola is not a food. Okay, it's not a food. What Coca-Cola does, what sugar does, is that they just give you this instant rush of sugar into your body. They give you this energy into your body. And once they give you this energy, after some time, you are short of energy again. And the next thing you have to do is to take on that Coca-Cola. So they give you this instant energy. They don't give you lasting energy. So if you rely on Coca-Cola and other energy drink for your or other energy drink for your energy, it's going to give you that instant energy, but it's not going to last long. That is why you see some people, when they start taking a lot of sugar, they keep taking more. They keep taking more. Because when you take a lot of sugar, what happens is that your stomach is not filled. What is just satisfying? What you are satisfying is your taste board, your tongue, your mouth. So when you take that Coca-Cola, you are satisfying your taste board. You are satisfying, but not your stomach. So that's why when you take sugar, you still want more sugar. You want to be taking more sugar. You want to be taking more Coca-Cola. So I want to let you know that Coca-Cola is not food. Try as much as possible to cut down on it. Take more of your healthy food. So if you like taking a lot of drinks, what I would advise, how I was able to try to cut down on mine, because like I talk about it, but I was a victim of being addicted to Coca-Cola and all those energy drinks. So what I try to do as much as possible to take smoothie, blend of fruits. You get. So I started replacing my caffeinated drinks. I started replacing Coca-Cola. I started replacing energy drink with blended fruits. I blend different types of food and add plain Greek yogurt if you can. So that gives you a smoothie miss. And that, especially, you can blend bananas. So that gives you like a drink to take. So I blend bananas, strawberries, blueberries, apple. I just blend different types of fruits together and take it instead of the normal energy. Banana is rich in energy, it's rich in calories. Okay, so you take that, that gives you energy, all right? But I would advise you stay away from those Coca-Cola, if possible, please. So having a blend of that fruits actually gives me this energy. Actually gives me the energy to talk more. All right. Before, if I want to shoot, if I want to do things, I rely on Coca-Cola and all those energy drink. But I had to cut it, cut it because I, over time, I have realized the benefits of staying healthy. I've realized the benefits of eating healthy. So having a blend of all those fruits gives me a good energy for the day. And for those that are even having difficulty drinking enough water, they are finding it difficult to drink enough water. Ah, oh, water is tasteless. I can't drink water. Let me tell you something. Having a blend of fruits will go a long way to help. I also noticed it personally because I was also, like I said, I was a victim, having difficulty taking water. But I noticed that whenever I blend, I have a blend of fruits, I feel hydrated and my urine is no longer concentrated. It's not like it's lighter. It's not concentrated. That shows that, okay, I'm hydrated. So having good fruits, watermelon, bananas, and those your normal fruits is going to help you hydrate yourself and give you more energy rather than relying on Coca-Cola and other sugar. I hope, Jumia Francis, your question has been answered, okay? Your question has been answered. Now, if you get the explanation, kindly drop on the comment section as we await other questions. <sighs> it's been a busy day. It's always a busy day when I shoot. So, Jumia Francis, did you get... I hope I'm pronouncing your way properly. Did you get the answer to your question? And if there is any question, drop on the comment section. I'm going to be here for an hour or so. Okay, Jimmy Francis said, yes, thank you so much. I'm glad you've got answer for your question. Then the other one is Basirat. She said, please, can a virgin with toilet infection for a long period of time without treating, will it lead to fallopian tube blockage? Toilet infection. For me, I would say yes, it can. Let me explain to you, um, Basirat. You see that UTI, urinary tract infection. Urinary tract, the way the urinary tract is, you know, you have the kidney, you have the urethra, you have the bladder, and you have the ureter where urine comes out. And all these things are usually in the pelvic region around that area. They are close to each other, one way or the other. Okay? So if you are having recurrent toilet infection and you are not treating it, it might spread upward. Even if it's not directly rated, it's my spread upward. So what I would advise you, Bashirat Shion, is that first of all, when you notice you have toilet infection, being a virgin or not, you're having sex or not, 
if you have toilet infection, kindly treat as soon as possible. Get it out. Infection in your body is not generally good. So treat it as soon as possible. Then try as much as possible to avoid reoccurrence. One thing is to treat it. One thing is to avoid reoccurrence of that infection. Okay? Because if you treat it now, you get the antibiotics your doctor give you or whatsoever medications your healthcare practitioner give you, and you don't prevent it, it's going to come back again. And when it comes back again, you are going to inch and you're going to treat again. And frequent UTI, frequent STDs generally, frequent sexually transmitted infection, frequent infection generally can lead to a pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay? But the ones that usually cause fallopian tube blockage, they are usually STDs though. You understand sexually transmitted, but UTI might be like might predispose you a bit. What I advise you to do is to treat all infections when you notice you are having a chain, when you notice you are having some abnormal discharges. See your doctor, get it treated as soon as possible, then prevent it from happening again. Since you are a virgin, you are not having sex, you have to check what is actually predisposing you to that um, urinary tract infection. For example, the toilet you are using, is it properly cleaned? Because if your toilet is not properly cleaned, that can predispose you to frequent UTIs. Your panties, do you regularly change your panties? Did you wash them? Even if you can't change it frequently, did you, do you wash them? Do you wash them? Do you change like, the day, like every day, not repeating your panties? Do you do that? And also, you are a virgin. Are you using chemicals to wash? Are you using soap to wash down there? You are a virgin doesn't mean that you, you cannot get infection. You can get irritation. You can get bony sensation in the vagina. Are you using soap? Some people will foam soap and use it to wash their vagina. No, don't do that. Don't listen to people that tell you to do that. Because when you do that, you are altering the pH around there. Okay? So don't use soap to wash it. Use water and let it be. The vagina generally is a safe cleansing area. It cleanses itself by itself. I will always say it. But when you go to social media, you see a lot of people saying, ah, why won't you clean this? Why won't you do this? Why won't you do that? I've seen a lot of video contradicting what healthcare practitioners are saying. But I'm here to let you know that the vagina is self cleansing. Don't use any soap. Don't use any water. Because the more you use soap and water, the more your chances of inching increases. The more you are going to be inching, the more you are going to be like, doing all those ah, it's inching me you know what i'm trying to say so outside the fact that your toilet your panties then what you're using to wash your vagina can actually predisposes you to have a lot of infection and you think it's toilet infection sometimes it's just the product you are using that is causing those inching because most people confirm that they have infection when they start inching and sometimes it's not toilet infection it can be as a result of what you are using on the, in the on, on, in the vagina and when that happens most people quickly they go and get antibiotics and when they get antibiotics you are just taking antibiotics for taking sake it's not doing anything because it's not bacteria infection self it can be trash it can be fungi that needs antifungi so that's why people continuously take antibiotics whenever they have inching and when they continuously take these antibiotics they abuse it when they not really have this bacteria infection they now go to get this antibiotics it will no longer work that's where you hear people saying i've been treating infection for a very long time but it's not going why because your body is now resistant to the antibiotics because you've abused it so i hope i've been able to answer your question basirat Seun. so you take note of it basirat Seun. hope i've been able to answer your question if not just let me know where you need for that clarification so if you are watching, I think we have more than a hundred people watching. Just click on the like button, please. Click on the like button, drop a comment. Let me know you are actually following. Let me know you are understanding and let me know you can hear me. All right. Basirat Sheun, if you get answers to your question, can you drop on the comment section? Let me know your question has been answered and I've done justice to it. Okay. Okay, Basira Shane said it's answered. I'm glad I'm able to help you out. You can see for all those that are sending me DMs, my live sessions is one of the easiest ways to get your questions answered. 
feel free to talk about your reproductive health. Feel free to talk about your health in general. Don't be shy. That's the problem I get. A lot of people are shy to speak out. They are dying in silence and they are not getting answers to their questions. So it does, to me, it doesn't make sense. If you have difficulties, the earlier you speak out, the better for you. All right? So if you have any questions, I'm here. I'm answering your questions. I'm taking all us. Kindly like. Click on the like button, okay? Click on the like button. Okay, another question just came out. When a man is having inching around the private parts, is it being transferred from a woman or also from the toilet the men can get it? Okay. That's from Jumia Francis. He said, when a man is having inching around the private part, is it being transferred from a woman or also from a toilet the man can get it? Let me explain to you. Inching of the private part can be as a result of different things. can be as a result of STDs, which is sexually transmitted infection or disease. And can be as a result of urinary tract infection. So a man having inching around the private part can be as a result of STDs that the, a woman transferred it to him, or urinary tract infection. It could be as a result of the toilet he uses. It could be as a result of uncleaned bursts. It could be as a result of poor personal hygiene. Okay. So when you notice a man is having inching. If it's causing a lot of discomfort, you can advise him to speak with your doctor. You can advise him to speak with the doctor to get the infection treated if he has any infection. Okay. But sometimes I I got a message from a man that said, I just like inching. Like, I just like inching generally. I don't know why. But it's not causing harm. It's not infected or things like that. But so find out from the man, why is he always inching? Is it that it's causing him discomfort? Let him see a doctor, get a test done. Okay. I get it's treated if if he has infection because if he has infection and is sexually transmitted when you have sex with a man you as a lady you are going to be sexually infected so that is that for jumia francis okay um michael joan john said can infection cause a man to have premature ejaculation can infection I don't really have, sorry, Michael John, I don't really have a direct answer to that question. But I feel, I'm not saying I'm sure, but I feel that infection can, have, depending on the type of infection, it can, affect, it can affect the man's functionality and can cause premature ejaculation. Yeah, it can. But it depends on the type of infection that a man has. But if a man is experiencing premature ejaculation all of a sudden, sometimes that premature ejaculation might be as a result of stress. Let me tell you something. Premature ejaculation might be as a result of stress, might be as a result of work overload, might not be as a result of infection, might not be as a result of some medical condition, might be as a result of, oh, the man is no longer attracted to the woman. Something like that can actually cause premature ejaculation. But sometimes, some premature ejaculation might be caused by infection. Okay? There are a lot of causes of premature ejaculation. I've made a video on the causes of a premature ejaculation where I explained this succinctly. So you can actually watch that particular video, Michael John, uh, to get a better understanding of the various causes of premature ejaculation and how to prevent it. Because I've seen men experience premature ejaculation. Everything is fine. They don't have infection. They don't have um, issues with um, any medical. They don't have any medical conditions. But environmental factors, psychological factors are involved, and that results in premature ejaculation. So sometimes psychological factors can cause premature ejaculation. Environmental factors can cause premature ejaculation. So these are the things you should take note of as a man. So it's not every time you're experiencing premature ejaculation, you feel it's infection, or you feel it's like it's a medical condition. So that's one thing I, I hope I've been able to answer your question. John, Jimia Francis says she's satisfied. That's a good news. That's a good one to know. Thank you very much, Jamia Francis. So I'm still waiting for more questions. Like I just said, I have a lot of time today. I'm not in a haste to go anywhere. I, I just want to dedicate today's to live videos and making, and making videos. So when I'm done with this live video, I'm going to be going live on my Facebook page for like 30 minutes to one hour. So for those that are not following me on my Facebook page, um, you can follow me on my Facebook page while I go live. 
I'll be very glad to see you on my Facebook page while I go live there because I'm trying to build the Facebook community also because some people can don't really like YouTube but health education has to go to a lot of people. So we have to use both the, um, the YouTube, the Facebook and the TikTok. But I'm focusing more on YouTube and Facebook now in bringing health education to the public. Okay, all right. Jumia Francis said that she's satisfied. John said, thanks you for your response. I'm glad I have been able to answer your question. Okay. So I'm waiting for more questions. We're waiting for more questions, all right? For all those that are sending me DMs, this is an opportunity for you to ask all your questions, seriously. Because when you ask your questions, you get answers, right? So I don't know why you're waiting. Ava said, a man has fluid coming out of his penis anytime he tries to use the washroom. Um, okay, wait. I think um, Ava's question is not complete because if a fluid is coming out from the penis anytime he tries to use the washroom, what does the fluid look like? Is it discharge? Is it smelly? Is blood coming out with it? There are lots of questions that your doctors are going to ask before they know the kind of test to be done. So, but if, if this fluid is frequent, it's not urine. It's not like your normal urine is coming out as discharges. It's coming out as maybe blood. It's coming out. So you have to know what type of fluid is coming out, the color of the fluid that is coming out. It can be as a result of some infection that needs to be treated. Okay? That's what I can say. A gamma emods. Okay? The global god... Godness Investment said, sorry, what if she's taking bets? Won't she use soap down there? What's bets? I don't know what's bets, please. Pardon me. I don't know what is taking bets. So I can't say. I don't know what's bets. Um, if you if it's a typo error, just let me know in the comment section. But I don't know what is taking bets. This lights all over, it's kind of affecting my eyes. Oh, I wish I can shoot in the dark, but if I shoot in the dark, nobody's going to see me because all these lights around, I think I need a, a what they call it now, a, mono, is it a monochromic glasses that helps to divert the light away from my eyes or helps to like reduce the effect of these lights in my eyes. I think somebody said I blink my eyes too much, like, oh, but I think it's the light around me, safe. It's actually making me do that. So I'm waiting for your questions anyway. I'm waiting for your questions. I've answered as much questions that are popping up. No. But I think most of the people that I answer is going away. So click on the like button if you are watching. It's not going to take a long time to click on that. If there is no questions on the YouTube channel, I am going to be going to Facebook. It's actually been long. I went live on Facebook. So I'm going to go live on Facebook if we don't have any question in the next two minutes. Okay. Thank you very much for liking. I think we have up to 10 likes. Normally we have a lot of likes, but what's happening today? My husband used to complain that my vagina is smelling after sex. What will I do? Okay. In terms of vaginal smell, there are different types of vaginal smell. Every woman has, a, has her own unique vaginal smell. But there are some vaginal smell, if it's foul smelly, there are different smells in the vagina. And that different smell might signify some kind of infection that needs to be treated. So what I would advise you to do is to watch the videos on the various smell from the vagina and what they signify. Okay? Watch the video of the various smell of the vagina and what they signify. That will actually guide you on what the doctor is going to be treating you for if you have any infection. But I want to let you know that the, every woman has a unique vagina smell. The vagina is not supposed to smell with a good fragrance. It's not supposed to smell like strawberries. It's not supposed to smell like vanilla, like flavors. It's not supposed to have that perfume scent. Okay? It's not supposed to have that perfume scent. It has its own natural smell. But if the smell is becoming like its smell is obvious and it's not really 
nice for your spouse, what I would advise you to do, check, do some an, a vaginal test, infection, infection test, and see if you have any infection. Get it treated. I believe after the treatment, the smell is going to go away and it's going to be better. I don't know if I answered your question, Francis. Okay. Yeah, because generally, if your husband starts complaining of the vagina is smelling, it might reduce his uh, sexual desire towards you. He might not want to have sex with you because he's not comfortable with the smell. Okay. He might like, it might even cause him to have erectile dysfunction. Sorry, not erectile, premature ejaculation because. He's no longer focusing on the sex. He might be like, oh, I'm not comfortable here. That might make him to come quickly. I'm just analyzing it the way it is. So what I would advise you, go for a test. It's normal. Women go down with infection, but it's advisable to treat it. So it's not something you should be embarrassed about. Okay. See a doctor, do some tests. If they tell you to do some uh, um, treatment, if they give you some treatment, stick with the treatment plan, get it treated. And if it's something your husband needs to get treated to, because when a woman is affected, um, she can easily transfer it to the husband and the spouse will not know because the spouse is not showing any signs and symptoms. So when if it's something that both parties need to treat, the doctors are going to tell you STDs, get it treated, and I believe the smell is going to go away. Okay? And I hope I've answered that question for you. So Michael John said, what is sperm count test? What is it all about? So sperm count test is also known as is semen analysis generally. They call it semen analysis. They check for the number of semen you have. At the, they will take some sample and do a test. They will check for the number of sperm that you usually produce, if it's like adequate. They will check for how your sperm is able to move. That's the motility of your sperm. They will check out. There's a, I think there are four different things they do when they do the sperm count. It's just to check your semen analysis, to check if it's enough to fertilize a woman's egg. Okay, so I made a video also on what they usually take note of when it comes to spam counts. The four things they take note of when it comes to spam count. So what I would advise you, watch that video. I might not be able to remember everything now, so you don't have to blame me because I have a lot of things I usually study. Why not have a video on that? So you can watch it. It's going to tell you. But spam count is generally to analyze your spam, check the motility, check the amount, and also check if it's enough to fertilize an egg. Because you know for an egg to be fertilized, a lot of millions of sperm have to travel. They have to surround the egg, but only one is successful to go in. So if you don't have enough, it will not be able to surround the egg and fertilize it and gives it what it wants. Okay? So that's why they advise you go for semen analysis. You can watch our video on sperm count or semen analysis. Okay, John? So another one says, Kemuna said, I'm 36 weeks pregnant. Oh, few weeks to go. Congratulations. And my stomach gets hard as a ball. Is it labor or is it no? Is it normal? So it gets hard as a ball. It's like contraction. Then it goes back. So that might be Braxton. There's what we call Braxton Hicks contraction. You get it's trying to prepare you for labor. So it's like it's as if you want to have contraction. You might you might feel pain. Sometimes you feel pain with it. Then it goes away. So it's practicing for the main contraction that's going to take place when you want to push the baby. So they call it Braxton Hicks contraction. It's like practicing the main contraction. So if you experience it, it's not like you, you, it's not like it's labor. It's preparing you for labor. And also what you should do is always try to take note of baby movement. As far as there is baby movement, just noticing that baby movement, then it's not something you should be worried about. Okay. So it's Braxton Hicks contractions you might be experiencing. Kemuna, Kemuma, I hope you get as your question has been answered. Okay. So that's just it. It's not something you should be worried about, Kemuma. Then IDP Chod Harry said, What does black guys have in their diet? They are more masculine, strong, immune, and most importantly, have penis. Is it genetic or they build the based on diet? For me, I'll take I'll say it's genetic predisposition. You get Genetics has a role to play when it comes to the color of our eyes, the shape of our head, how tall we are, how fat we are, how slim we are, things like that. So what I have to say is that the black guys are genetically um, predisposed to have that. Let's put it that way, okay? So it's not really the diet they necessarily eat, 
though some people work on themselves they take a lot of like they take some food they take some things to actually help them but it's genetics when it comes to the size of the penis it's actually genetic it's genetic predisposition it is not necessarily what they eat though some say that what they eat can have little impact on it but when it comes to that it's actually genetic predisposition I talked about what actually affects the size of the penis and how to make the penis look bigger. You can watch our videos on that. But I just want to let you know that the size of the penis is genetic and is not necessarily based on diet directly. Okay, then Angela, Angela, Angela Simon said, can you talk about ovarian cysts in a young lady? It causes an effect, please. I've made a video, a full video of ovarian cysts on this YouTube channel. If you can watch it, it's going to give you a more idea on ovarian cyst. Sometimes the cost of ovarian cyst, you can't really know what is actually causing it. Okay. Yes. These days, a lot of women are predisposed to have, they, a lot of, some young ladies have ovarian cysts. That's what I want to say. Some young ladies have ovarian cysts. It's more or less like an abnormal growth in the ovaries. You get, it's not supposed to be there. The ovaries is not supposed to have that growth, but now it's having that growth there. And when there's an ovarian cyst, it can affect your menstrual cycle. It can make a woman not to have a regular menstrual cycle when one has ovarian cyst. Your, your cycle becomes irregular with ovarian cyst. You will not be able to track your ovulation date to know when you're ovulating because you have ovarian cyst. It has a lot of effects when it comes to fertility. People with ovarian cyst, they can't really track their ovulation to get pregnant. It affects fertility. But that doesn't mean if you have ovarian cyst, you can't get pregnant at all. Okay, just that it affects pregnancy in the sense that you cannot track your ovulation to say, oh, this is the day I'm ovulating. I'm going to get pregnant this day. So ovarian cyst affects fertility, even polycystic ovary syndrome. There's PCOS. I've made a video on PCOS. I've made a video on PCOS. So you can watch the video on PCOS. They affect fertility general health. You can still get pregnant with it. You can watch our video on that, Angele. Okay. And we all know the ovaries is where the egg is like, hey, where you have the eggs, where the, you see your eggs you produced, it's stored, things like that. So ovaries are very important because without the eggs, you know, fertilization cannot take place. Okay. And ovarian cyst, polycystic ovary syndrome actually affects fertility. I've told you how it affects fertility because you're unable to track your ovulation. You're unable to know the day you're ovulating. You're unable to know your follicular phase. The various phases of your menstrual cycle. Okay, so K Kuma say yes, thanks. Then Francis said, "You are right, man." He said he's not enjoying me again. You can see there's one thing that is certain: if a man gets so so not comfortable with you because of the smell, because of this, he might not want to have sex again. It can naturally lead to premature ejaculation before you know he's coming quickly, and you complain that oh, my husband comes quickly. It can be as a result of the smell from the vagina. It can be as a result of you are not fully lubricated. There's no, there's friction with his penis and your vagina. So that can actually make him not to be in the mood. And even if he tries to be in the mood, he comes quickly. So for the guy that talked about um, premature ejaculation, you can see one of the causes. You might not just be sexually attracted to your partner or things like that. But like I said, get yourself treated and you'll be fine, okay? And don't go and pack soap into your vagina, please. Don't go and put soap and all those things into your vagina. Okay. My battery is going down. Resona says, my woman used to have smaller breasts before we started dating. But now they are quite big. Why is this so? Please. Oh. She used to have smaller breasts before you started dating. But now they are quite bigger. Why is this so? So, what I have to say in regards to that, smaller breast and bigger breast, one, genetics plays a role when it comes to the size of breast. You get, it's possible your woman or the woman that's your woman now that you're dating now, like she's now in the high peak of her puberty level. So that hormone that's responsible now is taking its effect. It is coming, it's coming in. So it's going to the breast and it's actually working its way out. So that's one of the reasons I can think for the now, okay? But the size of the breast is actually determined genetically, like from the genes. Or I said the woman went to go and do some breast implants. But it might not be breast implants or breast transplant or things like that. So it might just be that the hormones 
the hormones that are responsible for that tissue formations, they are just releasing itself. They are higher. This, this is the peak that it's high for her. So her breast all of a sudden started going bigger or something. So because all these things that you see in terms of the hips of a lady, um, the breast of a lady, this is actually motivated by the hormones in the body. Estrogen is part of it. Those curvy hips you see in lady, they might be as a result of the hormones that this lady is actually released. So the women, they are more curvy. They have this breast because they have more of the estrogen than the men. So they, it plays a role. So I feel it's not something you should be worried about. It could be as a result of some hormones doing their thing. Sometimes abnormal size in the breast, maybe one size of one breast is bigger than the other, might be as a result of some, maybe, what they call it now? It's not too much I wanted to say. I don't know the words to use again. I can't remember. So it's just good. What I advise you to do generally, you can tell a woman to be doing safe breast examination monthly. So actually get rid of the possibility of small, small cancer growing. Let's put it that way. But as a lady, safe breast examination is very important, okay? Because some women with breast cancer might experience abnormal growth too more around the breast. But I'm not saying it's the one. I'm just giving a general health talk, please. She doesn't have it. It might just be growth that's taking place in her. That's why she started having bigger breasts. So generally, a lady, it's advisable you do some breast safe examination. So take note of that, please, all right? Then you can have a discussion with your spouse. There's something I feel um, most couples should do regularly, and that is talk about things. Talk about sex. Talk about the sex you had. Did you enjoy it? What styles do you prefer? I think couples should talk more about it. It's not all about talking about finance, talking about uh, talking about um, child, talking about all that. Talk about the sex both of you have. Talk about things that are, you you have a girlfriend. Talk about the breast. Like, oh, I noticed these changes. What do you think could be the cause? Have a discussion that shows you care. It's not necessarily oh, you look at it and like oh, remove eye of things like that. Always ask questions to show that you are concerned. Find out why things are not like the way it used to be. I don't know if I'm making any sense, Sha, but I hope you understand. So that's that. So if there's any question, I'm still waiting to answer as much questions as I can, okay? It's a day for me and my subscribers and my followers. Like Ella said, for those that are watching me, after this live, I'm going to be going live on, the, um, on Facebook. Yeah, I'm going to be going live on Facebook to also take some questions if there is any, all right? But if there's no questions, I will go offline quickly on the Facebook. Okay, so I'm still answering questions here. I hope I've been able to answer Resonance's question. Juma Francis said she gets. Okay, basically all the questions here they have been answered. I, I'm glad I have answers to all the questions here. I might not be able to answer all your questions. The ones I don't know, I might have to go back and study and come back and tell you. But at least I've been able to answer the ones I have been given here so i'm still waiting so if you're watching this video it's not a bad idea for you to click on the like button please click on the like button that is the like button click on the like button <laughs> click on the like button drop a comment let me know you're enjoying the live session it's going to motivate me to actually come live and take as much questions as i can okay I've borne a lot of glucose today. Uh, Kamara, hi, I joined. Hello, Kamara, how are you doing? Kamra, Kamran, how are you doing? Yeah, we've been taking a lot of questions. That's what we've been doing today. We don't really have a particular topic we're talking about. I'm just here to take questions after shooting, and I hope you get benefit later on. Maybe you can watch the live video afterwards. That's going to tell you the questions we've answered. We've answered a lot of questions here today, so you can watch the live video as well afterwards. Thank you, Kamra. Thank you. Trust you're doing great, Kamra. Oh, did you hear that? Did my name just make that? <laughs> How often do you guys exercise? Like, I get lazy with exercising, Charles. Most times I just feel. Going to walk is part of my exercise. Oh, thank you, camera, for liking and sobbing. You are welcome to Nurses Lecture Room family. Thank you all. 
I think they used to give stars. I don't know how they give stars, but if you know how to give stars, you can give me stars. I know some people used to give stars, but I don't know how they do it though. If you are enjoying this life, give a lot of stars. I don't know. I don't know how they do it though, so I can't really teach you how to give stars or something like that. Okay. But what I would like, just like, click on the like button. It shows that you appreciate the video and drop on the comment section. Let me know you are enjoying the video. And for those that are watching these live sections, but they've not liked and they've not subscribed to our Nurses Lecture Room channel, I will advise you like and also subscribe. So camera actually said, your hair looks so beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, you're so pretty. Thank you. Sahel Hussainia said, hi. Hello, Sahel. And I hope I have pronounced your name properly. If I don't, kindly pardon me. It wasn't intentional. How are you doing? I trust you're doing great. We are here taking questions like I earlier said. Oh, I'm glad you're so happy. Thumbs up. Happiness is the key. Stay happy, stay positive, and stay joyous. Okay, so I still have some minutes to go here on Facebook, on YouTube before I go. Please and please, uh, just to show my support, kindly follow me to Facebook. Nurses Lecture Room on Facebook. I'm going to be going live. i spend just a few minutes there. I would appreciate if I see my YouTube subscribers on my Facebook page. And I also appreciate if I see my YouTube subscribers saying hi to me on my Facebook page. So Sahal Hussain said, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. I'm excited seeing you online, seeing all of you online and also following me on and asking your questions. So I'm excited. Okay, Francis asks, if a woman gives birth to cesarean section, and the husband did not allow her to meet up with days. She will stay before having sex. Can this cause infection? See, after cesarean section, you have sex. It's not going to cause infection. Okay, calm down. It's not going to cause infection. So as far you are comfortable, okay? Let's say you are comfortable. You're no longer feeling pain. And you feel, okay, you are okay to have sexual intercourse, then go ahead. So having sex after cesarean section, for me, it doesn't cause infection. No, I don't think so, no. It doesn't cause infection. Having sex after cesarean infection, cesarean section does not cause infection. But just make sure you are physically ready for sex, okay? Don't just go and start having sex when you know you are still in pain. You start when you are still in pain, the stitches are not, uh, they've not healed yet. So I don't advise that. When you are physically ready to actually accept him into your body, then go ahead. It doesn't increase your chance for infection. Except you're still bleeding, yeah. It's like bleeding, having sex on your meses, having sex after cesarean section. But one thing I advise is, if you are comfortable, it doesn't cause you pain. That's one thing you should take note. It doesn't cause you pain, then you can have fun. Camera said, I will try. So, so you drive a car? No, I don't drive a car. I don't know how to drive. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you ask that question, camera? In terms of car, I don't drive a car. Okay? Because, like, ugh, I've written my theory test in the UK, but the practical, it's actually, I don't know why I have phobias for driving. I'm trying to kill that phobia first before I start the practical test. Okay? So hopefully, oh, when I try, I'll try it again. But for the now, I don't think I can. So for the now, my husband takes me where I am going to. Then sometimes I use a public transport. I just get a bus pass. So I use it to go anywhere I want to go if I want to. So that's just it, okay? So feel free to drop your questions. Like Ella said, I'll be going to Facebook to do my Facebook live before I finally go offline. So Isino Ahmed said, what's your name? My name is Messi Mary. Yes, my name is Messi Mary. I usually introduce myself on all my YouTube videos. My name is Messi Mary. For those that don't know me, I am a registered nurse and a midwife. But I work as an anesthetic and recovery practitioner in the theater. I work basically in the theater as an anesthetic and recovery practitioner. 
and um also i have a public health master's in public health yeah so that's why i do more of talking i'm giving you public health information okay so that's that um hamid i hope you now know who is giving you a lecture now okay so i have an idea of midwifery i have an idea of not seeing i have an idea of um, public health but i work as an anesthetic and recovery practitioner in the theater so that's my specialty that's what i like doing for the now anesthetics putting patients to sleep what do we do for those i don't know what we do in terms of anesthetics like what we do we assist the anesthetic proper to put a patient to sleep to sedate a patient to put an airway on the patient to do a lot of things but we take care of your airway your breathing before you go to the theater during the theater we are there you understand we make sure that you are breathing fine your lungs are there everything is alive you are saturating fine that's what we do as an aesthetic nurses then afterwards as a recovery nurse we take care of you post-op okay we make sure you are fine post-op we make sure your vitals are stable your blood pressure things like that are okay before we send you back to the ward okay so that's my work in the hospital and aesthetic and recovery so that's if I'm not working as an anesthetic practitioner, I'll be working as a recovery practitioner. Like my roster is out. So tomorrow, I'm going to be working as an anesthetic practitioner from 8 o'clock to 7 p.m. Why next tomorrow, I'm going to be working as a recovery practitioner from 10 o'clock to 8 p.m. I think the day after, uh, it's just like rotating. Today, I might be anesthetics. Tomorrow, I might be recovery practitioner. So I can't do both on the same day. I can't do anesthetic and recovery on the same day, except I finish my anesthetic role and recovery needs assistance. Then I will have to work as a recovery assistant. Okay? So it's more or less like I work anesthetics and I work recovery. So that's just it. So for those that don't know, that's what I do in the theater. So you, maybe if I've... I think I've done one of my live videos when I was... On my break during work okay camera said do people ever judge you for how you look i don't really know well i know people are likely going to judge me for my content i that's what i feel though but i don't know so because i, I hardly care about what people say so i just focus on what i do and try to create value for people so what people are thinking doesn't really matter to me except they come back they come to me to tell me what they think. In terms of my look, I dress as modest as I can. Okay, so I don't think people drop, judge me for how I look. But I feel a lot of people feel I know a lot about sex and reproductive health. So they tend to look at me like, ah, he just talks about sex, things like that. So, so that's what I feel. But I don't know because I don't really care about how people think about me. What I care more is what I think about myself. So that's what is important, what I personally think about myself, not what people think about me. So if you focus on what people think about you, you are not going to be productive. You are not going to utilize your God. It's more or less like the video is not talking about Tamara. You ask camera, you're asking about me a lot. So I think that's all. Um, don't ask you questions about me. Do you like school? Yes, I like school. So that was why when I finished my BSc, I decided to do my master's and I'm planning to do my PhD. So I like school a lot because I like reading. I like knowing new things. I like studying. I like researching. I like, yeah, I like school. Because um, school is like, you get knowledge. Because doing my master's actually exposed me to some lot of research work, some a lot of materials. So the more you school, the more you get exposed, the more your brain gets busy. Because if you don't school, you don't learn. Your brain doesn't get busy. Yes, you might not go to school, but you might learn. But be it at home, be it reading, all of them in schooling. So I like school. So I think, okay, <laughs> channel, chatter. I think I've answered this particular question on this live video. I've answered this particular question on this live video. You said, what is your educational background? What did you study? First of all, I have a bachelor's degree in nursing science. Yeah, I have a bachelor's degree in nursing science from Nigeria. I have a midwifery license in Nigeria. Yes, valid midwifery license in Nigeria. So in UK, I have a valid nursing license. And I also have a master's from the University of Liverpool. 
yeah, Liverpool University in public health. Yeah, so these are my educational background, and I'm planning to do my PhD, but I've not started. So that's just it. Camera said, if you've broken an arm, do you have to still go to school? If I broke my arm, it's causing me pain. Definitely, I will not go to school. Okay? Uh, but if I can, if you have, if the pain is sorted, I know I can concentrate in school. Definitely, I will go to school. Omari Chas said, please, I have two kids. My second daughter is six years old. I'm finding it difficult to conceive. I've gone for hormonal checkup. I'm okay. My girlfriend advised me to go take injection to make me take in quickly. What I have to say, Omalicha, is what is the name of your inje the injection that your girlfriend is advising you to take? Is your girlfriend a nurse? Is your girlfriend a gynecologist? Is your girlfriend a doctor? So that's the first question I want to ask you. So if your girlfriend is not a nurse, is not a doctor, is not a gynecologist, what I would advise you to do if you want to get pregnant is to see a gynecologist, visit a fertility to give you all the necessary advice that you need. So if they feel that, oh, they have to give you some medications to naturally stimulate your ovaries, such as colomid, to stimulate your ovaries to produce more eggs, they will give you to go for semen analysis they will let you know so sometimes you don't have to listen to what your girlfriend says you have to follow what the doctor tells you to do and if you are trying to conceive again and you have a regular cycle you have a regular menstrual cycle what i would advise you to do is to track down your ovulation day and try to conceive that day. make sure you have sex with your partner on that day and see how it works okay don't go and take injection you don't even know the name you don't know the function you don't know what it is doing in your body all in the name of your girlfriend says you should take it yes your girlfriend might be having fertility issues and the doctor prescribes such medications for her and it worked for her she was able to get pregnant good and fine but that medication might not work for you because the reason why you are not getting pregnant might be different from what your girlfriend experienced so don't take the injection. That's what I personally advise. Don't take it. Speak with your fertility experts. Speak with your gynecologist or your healthcare provider. And I believe they will be in a better position to advise you on what medication or whatsoever thing they want you to take. All right? So this is what I have to say with you. In terms of camera, camera is so interested in knowing all about me. So anyway, my Disney princess is uh, frozen. Yeah. Frozen, like I love, I love Frozen. It's one of the best cartoons I've ever watched. Like I still have the memories. I will watch it over and over again, and I will tell my kids to watch it. My baby girls will watch it. So I like Frozen. Camera said in Pakistan, I had a tummy infection and it started to hurt again. Does it relate to it? Does it relate to what? That I don't know. So if you have a tummy infection, you can speak with your doctors, and they are likely going to give you. So medication, depending on what causes they feel is the cause of that tummy infection. So I, I don't know what it's related to. I don't know what causes it or things like that. All right. I have to share with you on this particular video. And I'll be going live on my Facebook now. So I encourage everybody to join me on my Facebook live. All right, I've tried here, so I'm going to be going live in the next one minute on Facebook. So I'm going to be ending this live now because we've spent 59 minutes here. Tamara, uh, camera, sorry, I don't really get that question you are asking. Okay, so does it relate to AIDS? Does it really back when I was in Pakistan? So I can't really give you a direct answer in regard to that because I don't understand it. Okay, so I think that's what I have to say here. Please like. Please like. Oh, this is tired. Please like, subscribe to the channel if you've not done, and see you in my next live video. I'm planning to shoot more videos on Thursday or Friday. On Friday, let's put it on Friday. So on Friday, you're going to see my face on this YouTube channel live. Stay tuned on the channel and get informed. Bye, everyone. I want to wave in the next 30 seconds because it's going to be like one hour. Hey!
Bye-bye, everyone. So I want you to just complete one hour. So 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. What I have to say is like, stay positive. Life is fun. Don't get too carried away. Don't be sad. No matter what you are passing through, just remain happy.